You know, we think about art all of the time. But sometimes, especially if you've taken a lot of art history classes, we all forget that paintings are actually three-dimensional objects. And they have lives and histories. They've been through all sorts of events. There's always that poor painting that lived in the household where someone didn't listen to mom when she said, don't play ball in the house. There's someone who got too enthusiastic with a champagne cork and perhaps punctured a painting. There are lots of things you can learn about a painting just from looking. So I thought we might talk about some of those today. And these are skills that you can take with you whenever you go to a museum or a gallery or auction preview. The picture I'm looking at right here has a surface that you might notice is very crackled. Cracklure is a natural aging of the paint. And cracklure is okay as long as it's stable. As a matter of fact, for something like this from the 17th or 18th century, if it didn't have cracklore, I'd be even more concerned than the fact that it does. Cracklure is a natural aging process, sort of like wrinkles. In this particular picture, it's painted on canvas. And so the cracklore tends to be a little bit heavier. And if you take a careful look, you can see fairly visibly how heavy some of the cracklore is. You can even see how, in this particular instance, some of the cracklore is starting to cup meaning that the paint, instead of lying completely flat on the surface of the painting, is just starting to cup up a little bit. Now again, that's not a terrible issue, unless the paint is actually starting to flake. And if you look at this particular painting, just look at some of the little teeny spots where the cracklor is just starting to cup up. You are just seeing the beginning of a few losses. So this is a picture that has a lot of age, so its condition is understandable. but you would want to keep that in mind in your bidding because you may want to have a conservator fix the painting for you to make that surface more stable. Some cracks are not exactly natural to a painting. Sometimes you'll see a crack lore that makes sort of a spider vein like crackle pattern. And if you take a look up here, we have one of those that sort of radiates out right by the, from the feet of the bird. And that's usually caused by something having hit the surface of the canvas. And that's how eventually you would get those radiating spiral cracks. Now, they don't happen the second something is hit. Uh, it might take 20, 30, 40 years for those to develop. Uh, so it's not something you would see right away. Again, as long as the crack lore is stable, there's no particular issue with it from a conservation standpoint. You just have to decide if you're comfortable with it. But with a sort of an old master like this, you, again, would expect to see crack lore. Other condition issues can also be seen fairly readily by the naked eye. And this picture has two examples of things we might want to pay attention to. The first is a little bit of damage that we're seeing in St. Bartholomew's hair. And if you look carefully up here, you can see evidence of some sort of retouch or puncture that may have been worked on at some point. You also might notice that the varnish on this particular picture is quite old and was probably applied by a brush. And we're seeing areas where that varnish has discolored into these sort of streaky areas down below. Now, there might be some other issues going on with this picture. The texture in his forehead seems a little strange, and the sheen to the surface of the paint seems inconsistent. Having said that, sometimes, to be sure, we have to take advantage of some simple tools. One of the simplest tools for examining a painting is something you're already familiar with. If you've ever watched CSI, or you've ever tried to make your Velvet Elvis poster look better, you've seen a blacklight before. My blacklight is just a simple flashlight version. It's got an LED. You can buy these very easily on the internet. And all it's going to do is it's going to take advantage of the fact that as paint ages, it reflects and absorbs UV rays differently. UV rays are the rays at the far end of the visible spectrum, the shortest wavelengths just beyond purple. And what we're going to do is take a look at this particular painting and see if we can detect any retouch using the UV light. To examine a painting under black light, all you need is a semi-dark room and, of course, a black light. And as you take a look at this little landscape here, take a look at the horizon line in the area where the trees start to spring up from the horizon line on the right-hand side. Right now, the whole area of that sky looks fairly flat and even. But notice when I use the UV light, what happens? All of a sudden, we get a big dark purple area right here. And that's a nice thick area of retouch. You might also notice there's a little bit of a halo around this. 
this area here is thinner glazes of retouch. And that was done just to make sure the retouch blends into the original paint so that it's not terribly obvious to the naked eye. There are other areas of retouch in this painting. And if you move down to the surface of the pond in the foreground, you'll see more retouch right in here again. Once again, it just sort of comes out of nowhere. There's the surface of the pond without the UV light. And suddenly it jumps up and is quite obvious now here. That's true on the other side as well. You might also notice, if you can look closely, there's an area that makes a nice dark sort of jagged line within this area of retouch. And that's actually a repaired tear. You can also see little tiny dots and dashes of retouch in some of the foliage along the left-hand side. And these are little teeny tiny areas that were probably touched up either to add in missing highlights or maybe to cover areas of small loss. You can also use a black light to check the authenticity of a signature. Now it won't tell you whether or not the handwriting is right, but what it will do is tell you whether the signature is original to the painting. You would do basically the same thing we're doing here. If you were to shine a UV light onto the signature and it suddenly jumped off of the surface in this sort of bright purple way, you would know that the signature is newer than the original painting. And that should, of course, make you concerned. Now, there are plenty of hooligans and skullduggerers who have learned how to trick the black light. So if you should happen to shine a black light onto a painting and the entire surface suddenly becomes very, very dense and suddenly sort of looks the color of alien mucus, then you know what you're looking at is a painting coated with a masking varnish. It's specifically coated to try to trick the UV light to make sure you can't see what's going on underneath the surface. If you see a masking varnish on the surface of the painting, once again, you should be concerned about it. Everybody knows to look at the front of the painting that is, after all, the business side. Having said that, it's actually very important to take a look at the back as well. We can learn quite a bit just from the back of a painting. Take this picture, for instance. This was done at the beginning of the 20th century. And notice we have an old label here on the back. But more importantly, notice that both the wood of the stretcher and the back of the canvas itself has turned into a rich sort of cappuccino brown. And that's the sort of toning we would expect to see of a canvas right from the beginning of the 20th century. Let me show you a contrasting one, just so you can see for comparison's sake. You saw how darkened the back of the canvas from the early 20th century was, but it would have started out like this. This is the back of a painting from July of 1970, as we're handily told by the inscription. And notice how much whiter and brighter the canvas is. And also, the stretcher is also much more like fresh, newly hewn wood. One of the other things you're going to want to consider as you're looking at the back of a picture is the actual coloration of the toning of the wood in the canvas. This is the sort of coloration we would expect to see. However, there are forgers out there who, rather than using old canvas, will use a brand new canvas and simply use wood stain to paint both the back of the canvas as well as the stretcher. Sometimes that can be very difficult to detect. But the coloration is sort of like the difference between a cup of coffee with rich, wonderful cream in it, which is a more warm, rich color, uh, and the sort of fainter color that you get in your cup of coffee when you put skim milk in it instead. The other thing to watch for uh, is very often when they go ahead and use wood stain on the back of a canvas to make it look older than it really is, very often they won't take the time to actually paint underneath the stretcher bar. So if you sort of see a white edge of canvas sticking out underneath the stretcher bar, that's a clue there may be a problem. Another clue may be that there's a scratch to the wood. And if the wood comes up a nice bright white, like brand new wood, you know once again you're looking at a stretcher bar that's probably been painted with wood stain. We can also learn a little something about the history of an object from looking at the back. This picture has that nice tonality we'd expect to see in a 19th century canvas and its accompanying stretcher. You can also notice fairly readily, I think, that there are a number of patches and repairs on the back of this. You might even notice that there's an example of a spider crack here that we were talking about earlier. But what's odd is we're seeing it from the back. The reason for that is that some point in its life, after that crack lore started, this picture was cleaned. And what we're actually seeing is the solvent used to clean the face of the picture leaching through the canvas and leaving the staining on the back. And that's what we're seeing in these little areas of crackler that are stained as well. 
We already talked about this little Hudson River School picture when we were looking at it under the black light. But let's take a look at the back, because we can learn even more from the back. Now, as a Hudson River School picture, this would have been painted in the 19th century. And yet, clearly, from the back, both the stretcher and the canvas don't seem to jibe with a 19th century tonality. That's because something else has happened here. As we saw under black light, there are several repairs to the piece. You can repair a puncture by using a patch, or if you have multiple punctures or large ones, sometimes it's best to line a painting. That means you're taking a new canvas and adhering it to the back of the old canvas. So what we're seeing is a canvas probably from the 1980s that was adhered to the old 19th century canvas. At that same time, the conservators replaced the old stretcher that would have been a nice rich brown with this much more modern stretcher, which is more stable. There are also some other things you might look for on the back of a work of art. In this particular instance, we're seeing a stencil that's been placed onto the artist board. It tells us where the artist board was manufactured, which gives us a sense of the date. It helps to confirm the possible age of the painting. You'll see these on the backs of both boards and panels, as well as on canvases. You might also discover exhibition labels that help to develop provenance on a painting. So once again, always look at the back. A quick peek at the back of a painting might even show you that the artist has actually reused the canvas, such as this example here. When you're looking at a work of art, and you're not quite sure what you're seeing, remember it's okay to ask questions. So ask somebody at the gallery or an auction house where you're perusing. If they don't have an answer for you, you may want to have a conservator look at a painting for you. Most galleries and auction houses don't have their own conservators on staff, but they're more than willing to allow you to have a conservator come in on your behalf to take a closer look at a painting. Last but not least, after you've done your looking both front and back, remember to take a moment to just step back and enjoy the work of art you're looking at. That, after all, is why we're here.